in the Injil, the Wahi which was given to Isa alayhi salam. This Bible that the Christians have today, it's not the Wahi which we believe in. This Bible does contain the word of God. It also contains the word of prophet and also words of historian as well as pornography. It's totally not the word of God. No wonder the Christian scholars, they're keeping on revising the Bible. We believe in the original Wahi given to Isa alayhi salam, but the present Bible is not the correct Wahi. It may contain part of the Wahi. How to check up which part is true? You have to check it with the Furqan. And the Furqan is the Holy Quran. Similarly, if you analyze all the messengers that were sent before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, all the revelations that came before Holy Quran, all of these revelations and these messengers were only sent for their people. And the message was supposed to be followed only for a particular limited time period. As the Holy Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 49, that Isa alayhi salam, he was sent only for the Bani Israel. The message is repeated in Surah Saf, chapter 61, verse number 6, that Isa alayhi salam, the son of Mary, was sent only for the Bani Israel, the children of Israel. The same message is given in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 5 to 6, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tells his disciples that go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, who are the Gentiles? The non-Jews, the Hindus, the Muslims. Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That means he was only sent for the house of Israel. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24, that I have not been sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So all the messengers and all the revelation. By name, only four revelations are given in the Holy Quran. But there were several revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Sufa, Ibrahim, and various other revelations. But all the revelations that came before the Holy Quran, and all the messengers that came before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only sent for their people and for a particular time period. But our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Holy Quran says, in Surah Al-Anbiya, chapter 21, verse number 107, it says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا Rahmat al that we have sent thee not but as a mercy to the whole of humankind, as a mercy to all the worlds, as a mercy to all the creatures. The Holy Quran says in Surah Sabah, chapter 34, verse number 28, that Bashira wa Nazira, that we have sent thee not but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them against sin. But most of the humankind yet do not know. Similarly, all the religious scriptures that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that came before the Quran were only meant for that people and for a particular time period. But the Holy Quran, it says in Surah Ibrahim chapter 14 verse 52, as well as Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 185, and Surah Azumur chapter 39 verse number 41, that it was sent for the whole of humanity. Regarding a question, that are these scriptures, the Vedas, the Bible, the Zed Avesta, the Satir, the Upanishad, are they the word of Almighty God? What I can say, that we believe in Injil as the word of God, but the present Bible is not the word of God. Regarding Veda, Upanishad, Gita, Zed Avesta, the Satir, I can say maybe they were the word of God, maybe. I cannot say for sure. Since the Quran does not say that Veda is the word of God, I cannot say for sure. I can only say, maybe they were word of God. But even if they were the word of God, all the scriptures besides the Holy Quran have been changed by human beings. They have been corrupted. As a famous critic of Islam, William Muir, he said two centuries before that the only religious scriptures which has maintained its purity is the Holy Quran for 12 centuries. William Muir who is a very strong critic of Islam, he had to agree that this Quran has maintained its original purity for 12 centuries. He said this 200 years before. So, regarding the messengers, whether Ram, whether Lakshman, all these, were they messengers of God or not? Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was, because the Quran says. But the name of Ram and Buddha and Zoroaster, 
is not mentioned in the Quran. So what I can say, maybe they were. I don't know. But even if they were, they were only meant for that time. And they were only supposed to be followed by that particular people. The scriptures that came before the Quran, they were only meant for a particular group of people and they were only meant to be followed till that time. So even if they were words of God, even if the previous messengers were messengers of God, you only have to follow the last and final messenger that is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Even if the other scriptures were the word of God, today you have to follow the last and final message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the Holy Quran and nothing else. Regarding, can you be a Christian, Hindu, Muslim, it's the same? No, sister. It's not the same. Why? Because if you analyze, the Holy Quran says in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3, verse number 52, that Jesus, peace be upon him, he was a Muslim. Same thing as the Bible says in Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse number 30. I seek not my will, but the will of my Father. If you translate into Arabic, not my will, God's will, it is nothing but Islam. He was a Muslim. Abraham, peace be upon him, the Holy Quran says, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 67, he was not a Jew or a Christian, he was a Muslim. So today, if you have to choose any religion, the Holy Quran says, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19, in Nadina in the Allah al-Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. Though the other religions speak about monotheism, only monotheism is not sufficient. You have to believe in Tawheed. You have to do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Holy Quran repeats the message in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 85. That if anyone desires any other religion besides Islam, submitting the will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will not be accepted of him. And in the year after, he'll be among the losers. Hope that answers the question. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Azam Khan and a mechanical engineer by profession. First, I congrats you for the beautiful speech you had delivered. Now, my question is, water is called by different names in different languages, like in English as water, in Hindi as Pani, in Tamil as Tani. Similarly, if God is either called Ram or Jesus, is it not one and the same? So that was the question that water in different languages can be called as water in English, Pani in Hindi, Tani in Tamil. Similarly, God is one. Can we not call him by Ram or Jesus, etc.? Peace be upon him. As I mentioned in my talk, the Holy Quran says in Surah Isra, Chapter 17, verse number 110. Qulidullah abidur Rahman. Ayat ma tadu. Follow Allah's mal husna. Say call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful name. You can call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by any name, but it should be a beautiful name and it should not conjure up a mental picture. It should contain the qualities of Almighty God. And the same message is repeated in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 8. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 180, as well as in Surah Al-Hashar, chapter 59, verse number 24, which says, to Allah belongs the most beautiful names. You can call him by any name, but it should not conjure up a mental picture. Regarding a question that water is called by different names in different languages, and I know about it. In English, it's called as water. In Hindi, as Pani. In Tamil, as Tani. In Arabic, it's called as mind. In Surah Alambia, chapter 21, verse number 30. In Sanskrit, it's called as Apa. In Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 4. In Shuddha Hindi, it's called as Jal. In Gujarati, as Jal or Pani. In Marathi, as Pani. It's called as in Kannad. It's called as Nir. In Telugu, Nir. And in Malayalam, as Vellam. Various languages. You can call. I gave you only 10 examples. Quran gives 99 attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there is no objection if you call water in any language as long as it is water. In any language. But it should be water. It should not be something else. For example, if suppose someone comes and tells me 
that I have been advised by my friend that every day in the morning I should have one glass of pani. I know pani means water, so I understand what he's saying. But then he continues, 